there. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about personal branding. I've built a million follower brand online, and in this video, I'm going to explain exactly how you can do the same, even if right now you are starting at absolute zero. So first, let's just chat for a moment about why a personal brand. So I have two brands. I've got my personal brand, Gillian Perkins, and then I've also got an impersonal brand called Startup Society. And I've built both of these brands up together. I started with my personal brand, but there are some big benefits to both personal and impersonal brands. Personal brands give you tons of opportunity. Like anywhere you go at any time, you can start a new business on the back of your personal brand and it just jump starts it and can help it to be basically instantly successful. Impersonal brands, on the other hand, have some strong points too. They can be a lot more flexible in a different way because they are more separate from you and so you don't necessarily have to be directly involved, you don't have to be the face of it, you can outsource everything if you want to, and if you ever decide you wanna exit, you can sell it. So really I'd recommend you build both a personal and an impersonal brand, but today we're gonna to talk about personal branding because that's what I'd recommend you start with. And I'm just gonna start out by reading a quote from Donald Miller in this book, Building a Story Brand. He says, every day, most business leaders make a mistake that costs them thousands, if not millions of dollars. They don't clearly explain what it is their company does. And I'll just add to that, that you can never clearly explain what your company does if you haven't already decided what exactly it is your company does. So the very first thing you need to do is establish your brand. Now, this comes down to just answering a few simple questions. First, what is the value that your brand offers or how will your brand help people? So you wanna make sure that you boil this down to one main way in which you are going to help your target customers. And then the second question is, who are those target customers? Now, of course, you could narrow it down based off of your target market's gender or age or hair color or any sort of demographic like that. But what I'd really recommend you focus on is by defining the type of person based off of what problem or desire they have. Question three is what will you name your business? And if it's a personal brand, most likely you're just gonna go with your own name, maybe your first and middle or your first and last, or you might choose a pseudonym. And then finally, you want to define your brand's personality and or style. Now, the reason why this is important is because you want to create a unique look for your brand that sets it apart from other brands. Also, that invokes the feeling that you want your target customer customer to have when they experience a brand. And finally, you want your brand to be recognizable so that every time someone sees content that you created online, they immediately recognize it because that is what will really enable your brand to build momentum with its growth over time. Now, I know you'll probably need to spend a few minutes thinking about your answers to these questions, so I'm going to put them in the description below so that you can take your time thinking about them. Now, once you have established your brand, you've decided what your brand is all about and what its style is like, then you get to move on to actually creating the visuals to communicate those ideas that you've come up with. So we need to create visuals to communicate a brand that is fun or quirky. So you wanna choose colors and you want to create a logo for your business. Maybe you want to define some fonts that you're going to use and that sort of thing. Now, I think that HubSpot's guide for this is really helpful, which is why they are the sponsor of today's video. You can grab a free copy of their branding guide down in the description to help you with creating these visuals as well as the entire process of establishing your brand and figuring out exactly what it is your business does. You can clearly communicate that to your audience. Next, I'd recommend that you set up a simple website and some social media channels for your brand. Now don't overdo it here. I think that's the biggest mistake people make is they overcomplicate these things. Really, you can have the simplest of websites, just like two or three or four pages on your website, just to tell a little bit about who you are and what you do and how you help. If you have any products you wanna sell, you can put them on there. And also just linking people to your social media channels where they can consume your content or maybe you have the content on your website itself. And then when it comes to social media channels, again, just keep it simple. You don't need to be everywhere. I'd really recommend that you just 
just choose one or two platforms to focus on because it is way easier to create a ton of growth on one channel because you will be putting that much more attention and energy and focus into that one space than it is to try to build your audience in several spaces. It just spreads you too thin and you can never really get that momentum that you need to grow your brand to thousands or millions of followers. Now I know this next thing you're gonna feel like you are not ready for, it is not time for this. What, Gillian, you know, I just need to build my audience first. Okay, but even before you really start building your audience, I want you to beta launch a product. Yeah, I know, feel like way too much, way too soon. But there are a few really important reasons for beta launching a product early. First of all, it helps you to get serious about your brand and this will really help you to be consistent with creating content for your business. When it just feels like a hobby and it doesn't feel like a real business, it's tough to keep publishing your newsletter every week or posting on Instagram every day or putting out a new YouTube video every week because those things require time, they require effort, and if it just feels like a hobby, then it doesn't feel worth it. But if you're actually selling something, if you're actually a legit business, it helps you be serious about it. So that's one reason, but another is because it's gonna make you also look like a legit business, which is really key for getting people interested in following you and getting other brands interested in working with you. Also, as soon as you make your first few sales, you can work on getting some really great testimonials. And it's actually good if when you first launch a product, you only make a couple of sales because it allows you to really double down on those clients or customers Customers, give them the best experience possible, and then they will write you the most amazing testimonials. And then finally, we can't not mention that launching a product early enables you to start making money earlier. I don't want this to just be a hobby, just be something you're spending your time on. I don't want you to be chasing vanity metrics. I want you to have a profitable business from month one. Now this next step might feel a little bit random, but it makes a big difference. You wanna produce a few epic free resources. So I know you might think like, shouldn't I just spend my time producing free content like videos or Instagram posts or whatnot just to grow my audience or producing paid products that will actually earn me money. But by producing just a couple free resources, the sort of thing that people have to like sign up on your website to get, this will do wonders for growing your email list and helping you to build that momentum with your brand growth. And by creating just a couple really epic free resources, it will set you apart from your competition. What I want you to do is create a couple free resources that are better than what some of your competition is selling as their paid products. This will get people to pay attention to you like nothing else. Now, this final step is where all these pieces come together. Everything you've been doing has been laying the groundwork to make your business look professional, look legit, look successful, which helps to get people to follow you, but also sets you up to be able to do partnerships with other already successful brands. And this is huge because it allows you to effectively skip the line. And instead of having to build your brand and your audience one follower at a time on social media or with your content, you can have this like fast track ticket to success where you team up with a brand that already has an audience and you get visibility to their audience and that grows your audience by hundreds if not thousands of followers at a time. Now, other brands won't be interested in working with you when you are a tiny brand if you don't even look legit. But if you look really polished, if you look professional, if you look successful, then even if your numbers are small, they will want to work with you because they will want to team up with someone who can create awesome content for their audience. So when I say team up with a brand, I mean things like getting on their podcast, or being a guest on their YouTube channel, getting to write for their website, or teaming up for a giveaway, or even to promote your product to their audience and then split the profit. Okay, I hope this video has been helpful for you because it really is time for you to start building your personal brand. As I mentioned earlier, the last few years have shown us how crazy the world is and how dramatically things can change practically overnight. So it is important that you start to create this security for yourself, the security for your business where you will be able to easily pivot. You've probably heard in regards to networking, it's not what you know, it's who to know, and that's totally true, but sometimes even more powerful 
and who you know is who knows you. And that's really what building an audience is all about. Now, for your next step, if you're not really sure what you want your brand to be about exactly, then watch this video for some help figuring that out. Or if you know what your brand is all about, maybe you've already started it and you're ready to really get things moving, then watch this video to learn how to get visible and start growing your audience. And of course, don't forget to check out Startup Society as soon as you're ready to start building your brand online.